Good morning everyone, it's lovely to welcome you to church this morning. Apologies for the slight delay to the start of the service, John has just hot-footed it from Sunnington to join us. So welcome to our service today. For those at home who might be watching and don't know, my name is Joy, and I am the curate here and I will be, and John will be bringing us God's word later in the service. Today we are celebrating Christ the King. So we're going to begin our worship with some words from Scripture, from Psalm 93 and Revelation chapter 1. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. The Lord God said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. And we continue our worship with our first hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King. Your feast. 
gather us in. The done and the doubting, the wishing and wondering, the puzzled and pondering, who long for the company found at your feast, gather us in. The proud and the pretentious, the sure and superior, the never inferior, who long for the levelling found at your feast, gather us in. The bright and the bustling, the stirrers and shakers, the kind laughter makers, who long for the deep joys found at your feast, gather us in. From scattered homes, from corner or limelight, from fears and obsessions, from tears and depression, from untold excesses, from treasured successes, to meet, to eat, to be given a seat, to be joined into the vine, be offered new wine, become like the least, be found at your feast. Gather And so we come to that time when we say sorry to God. My brothers and sisters, not out of dread and fear, but believing that God is faithful to forgive, let us rid ourselves of what we need carry no longer. Eternal God, Maker of the skies above, lonely Christ, born amidst the growing earth, spirit of life, wind overflowing waters, in earth, sea and sky, you are there. O oh, hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul behind all souls, in everything we touch, in everything we meet, your presence is around us, and we give you thanks. When we have not touched, but trampled your creation, when we have not met, but missed you in one another, when we have not received, but rejected you in the poor, forgive us and hear us we plead for mercy. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. <coughs> know that God is good, and those who tr are truly sorry, God forgives what is past and enables us to begin again. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Once we were beyond God's mercy. Now that mercy has been given to us. So let us live as those who treasure God's costly generosity by safeguarding God's earth, delighting its people, and loving our Maker, to whom be glory forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we say our, together our collect for today, our special prayer. God our Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and with those who sit, one God. to these things, the first to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. 
All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made a kingdom of priests for God his Father. All glory and power to him for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And the nations of the world will mourn him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, from the, begin the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. And this is the word of the Lord. And is God. Works of you, helps if you know where the step is. <laughs> we continue with our worship with our next hymn, How Great Is Our God.
from John. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked. Jesus replied, Is this your own question? Or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me <clears throat> from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, So you are a king. Jesus responded, You say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognise that what I say is true. Thank you, Val. Let's pray as we stand. Heavenly Father, as we think of the nature of Jesus' kingship, we pray that you will give us a greater understanding of how we are called to serve our King, Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do please sit down. I've just come from Semington where Eric Clifford preached and he of course reminded us that although we celebrate Christ the King today, we actually are called to celebrate King Jesus not just every Sunday, but every day for King Jesus is called to be Lord of our lives. And we're thinking about that today. We're thinking about the nature of Jesus' kingship. But to begin in helping us think about this, I've got a, well, press gowns volunteer um, who's going to come out. If you stand here, somewhere in line with where you set up the camera, that would be lovely. So, we're going to get ready to proclaim Michael as King of Hilperton. <laughs> so here's your purple tunic. And here's a, a purple cloak. And Asta were doing a good line in crowns. <laughs> so here is a crown. So let me invite you to welcome the new King of Hilperton with a clap. Now does that make Michael King of Hilperton? <laughs> The answer's no, just in case you're not sure. So, although you're dressed as a king, Michael, and although you're very important to us, you're not actually king of Hilperson, are you? No. So you can keep the rose, but give me your crown back. <laughs> you can have it later if you want to. And thank you for playing along with this. <laughs> You might be wondering what the point is in that. Why did I ask Michael to dress up? You might be wondering whether the question, how do we recognise a valid king, is relevant to our Bible readings. 
And I'd like to suggest this. For Pilate, when he asked Jesus if he was king of the Jews, the idea that the preacher dragged before him was any sort of king was just as ridiculous as us all proclaiming Michael to be king of Hilberton. Pilate was a Roman official, a career politician. He wanted to please his superiors by dealing speedily with any potential unrest and by showing the Jewish leaders who was truly in charge. In saying to Jesus, so you say you are a king, he was almost certainly hoping for a reply that would enable him to belittle the chief priests and civic leaders who'd arrested Jesus. Pilate never for a moment thought he was in the presence of a king. But we, of course, know the reality. We know the truth. We know that Pilate was in the presence of the greatest king who has ever lived, King Jesus, who, as our reading from Revelation makes clear, was with God the Father at the beginning of time, who lived on earth, died on the cross for us, and rose from the dead, who is present with us now, guiding us through the Holy Spirit, and who will return to earth at the end of time as we know it, when he will usher in a new age in which death and crying and pain will be no more, and his ultimate victory over sin and death will be complete. As God's revelation to John makes clear, Jesus is the ruler of the kings of the earth. Today's festival of Christ the King, I think, presents us with challenging questions. Do we really treat Jesus as our King? Not just on this festival day, but of course every day of our lives. Do we see ourselves and one another as adopted children of the greatest king that has ever been and ever will be? This festival of Christ the King calls us to truly honour and worship and listen to King Jesus, King of the whole earth. Jesus, in his reply to Pilate, states that he was born to testify to the truth. And he went on to say, everyone who belongs to the truth listens, listens to my voice. And yet so often, even those of us who do acknowledge Jesus to be our King, fail to listen to him adequately. All too easily, we try to deal with our lives in both times of struggle, such as the one we're going through now, and times of joy in our own strength. We become too busy to pray, rather than recognising that it's as we spend time with King Jesus in prayer and in encountering him, as we read the Bible, that we grow in our awareness of his presence and his will for our lives. Jesus, our Lord and King, teaches us to worship God with all our heart and with all our mind and with all our strength and to love our neighbours as ourselves, as Mark records in chapter 12 of his Gospel. John, in Revelation, points out that everyone, even kings, should welcome Jesus as Lord of our lives and turn to him, turn to him for guidance and for direction. Last week, 
General Synod, the Queen publicly declared her belief in Jesus, her belief in Jesus as King of all, and reminded us of our call to encourage others to trust in and follow Jesus. As some of you will know, the General Synod, the Church of England's governing body, has elections every five years, and a new Synod has just been elected, and it had its first meeting last week. And each new Synod, at their first meeting, is traditionally addressed by the Queen, though last week Prince Edward read the address that she had personally written on her behalf. After expressing sadness that she couldn't be there in person, she reflected that it is now 50 years since she addressed the very first synod. And I think the opening of her address is inspiring, and so I would like to share it with you. And Prince Edward said this on her behalf. The list of tasks facing that first general synod may sound familiar to many of you. Christian education, Christian unity, the better distribution of the ordained ministry to the needs of the population. But one task stands out supreme, to bring the people of this country to the knowledge and the love of God. Of course, in our richly diverse modern society, the well-being of the nation depends on the contribution of people of all faiths and of none. But for people of faith, the last few years have been particularly hard with unprecedented restrictions in accessing the comfort and reassurance of public worship. For many, it has been a time of anxiety, of grief and of weariness. Yet the Gospel has brought hope, as it has done throughout the ages, and the Church has adapted and continued its ministry often in new ways. And of course we've had to adapt here too. That's the end of what was actually said. But there is a lot more which you might like to read. It is available through the medium. And so what does this mean for us? I think it's an important reminder that the core to us as followers of King Jesus is at once simple and challenging. It's to prayerfully discover how we are called through the power of the Holy Spirit to, and I quote from the Queen's address, bring the people of this country to the knowledge and the love of God. And we're called to do it especially here in our villages and in our workplaces. We seek to be faithful as we gather for worship, as we offer a whole variety of ways of worship. We seek to be faithful as we prepare people for baptism, for marriage, and as we comfort the bereaved and take funerals. We seek to be faithful as we go into schools, and offer collective worship, now adapting again to providing that online. We seek to be adaptable in all of the things we offer here, from dropping through coffee to toddlers at the tin and, and tea at the tin. And our call in these challenging times and in this different landscape a landscape that's going to continue to change into next year, is to be adaptable and faithful. And may we always be prayerful, seeking the guidance and will of King Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And through that, 
May we trust in the hope that is given to us as we seek to share that hope with others so that they too are comforted in these challenging times. Amen. John has given us much to think about in his words. And let us stand now and affirm our faith, our faith in Christ as King, King of our lives today, tomorrow and every day. There is no other God, there never was and never will be, than God the Father, unbegotten and without beginning, the Lord of the universe, as we have been taught, and his Son, Jesus Christ, whom we declare to have been with the Father, with the Father and to be God ultimately spiritually by the Father, in a way that baffles description, before the beginning of the world, before all beginnings, and by him are all things, visible and invisible. He was made man, defeated death, and was received into the heaven by the Father, who has given him power over all names, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue will acknowledge to him that Jesus Christ is the Lord God. We believe in him, and look for his coming soon, as judge of the living and the dead, who will treat everyone according to their deeds. He has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us in abundance and the gift and guarantee of eternal life who makes those who believe and obey children of God and joint heirs with Christ. We acknowledge and adore him as one God in the Trinity of the Holy Name. Amen. And please be seated now for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King, and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Christ the King, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, at this time of crisis when so many are suffering, we pray for our nation and our world. Give our leaders wisdom, our health service strength, our people hope. Lead us through these parched and difficult days to the fresh springs of joy and comfort that we find in Jesus. Christ the King, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, thank you for being a different kind of king. Thank you for your goodness and kindness in our lives. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your kingdom that is unlike any kingdom in this world. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord of lords and King of kings. And we pray that your kingdom will reign forever in our hearts and in this world. Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come here now, bringing a kingdom of justice, righteousness, hope, love, peace, mercy, and grace for all. Lord, we ask that you rule in our hearts, lead in this world, and govern over your kingdom. Christ the King, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer for today, we are asked to pray for the Church of Bangladesh. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Winterbourne Valley and Milton Abbas Benefis in Milton and Blandford Deanery. Lewis Pearson, who leads the church there, 
asks us to pray for them as they explore how they can best love and serve the six communities that make up their benefice. May they realise that they can't do everything and may they feel liberating as they discern and follow that to which they are called. In our own benefice cycle for this week, please pray for all those who lead and attend prayer groups, fellowship groups, home groups and seasonal study groups. Strengthen Karan and Andrew, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, and that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Christ the King, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you gather the lambs in your arms. We commend to your loving care all those who are sick. Relieve their pain, guard them from all danger, restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength, and raise them up to a life of service to you. Lord, we bring before you this morning all those named in the Canal Side News and others known to us. Christ the King, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. This morning we pray for the family of John Masters and all those who have died as a result of the pandemic. In company with Christ who died and now lives, may they rejoice in your kingdom where all our tears are wiped away. Unite us together again in one family to sing your praise for ever and ever. Christ the King, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Mary Magdalene, St. Michael and St. George, and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
ransomed souls brought the sinner near to your throne all within me cries out in praise your majesty Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, 
he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same way, he took the wine. And having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave it to the, the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the New Testament, new relationship with God, and sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. I will drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit fearing upon us. Upon this bread and this wine, may they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole as with the bread and wine which we now eat and drink, are changed into us. May we be changed into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. He whose table was open to all is now present in this bread. He whose word welcomed friend and stranger offers friendship through this cup. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As always, communion will be brought to you with one kind only, and where you are sat. The body of Christ, broken for me and for us all. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for us all. Amen. Amen. So I now invite you to join in a prayer of spiritual communion, thinking particularly of those who have not been able to receive here and those who are joining with us online. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Stir up, O oh Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they may plentifully bring forth the fruits of good works, and may you plentifully reward. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we thank you that you have shared this feast of your kingdom with all peoples, and have united all races in your Son, Jesus Christ. May the unity we have known here 
Give us joyful anticipation of the fullness of life to which you call us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we bring our worship towards a close with our final hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <coughs> Tea at the tin. Tea at the tin. Oh, the tea at the tin. Yeah, but how could I possibly forget tea at the tin? <laughs> so you're very welcome to join us at our one or both those services. Those of you who haven't spotted yet our beautiful <coughs> photographs have been selected for our church calendar. Please do have a look at the board at the back. The calendars are available to order at the moment, and the price is ten pounds, of which I think over fifty percent of it goes towards mm. the church. Mm. So it is really worthwhile, and look, I've got to say, the photographs are a really high standard, so well done to all of those who got selected. Have you said something about food? Mm -hmm. uh, are, we, are we having coffee and cake afterwards? Was, yep, there's coffee yeah, and cake afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, I thought I could come back in. Thank you. There was um, the, the Scouts uh, was, and, and Cubs were selling coffee and cake uh, of yesterday at the Templeton Village Hall. And they kindly donated the surplus cake here. Okay. So, uh, so do enjoy some afterwards if you have time. And um, the, the photos are great. Um, 
Mrs. Reese has the bragging rights in our house. She won and I didn't. <laughs> to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. So